Well, what is going on everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing, the underwater series. Today's video is one that I'm very, very excited to show you guys and that is because this is a rare fish. I have never been able to capture this species of bass underwater, especially in this scenario before. And so that is what makes me so excited about today's episode. Now you may look at this bass up in the corner and think, that's not a rare species of fish, that's just a largemouth bass. Well actually you would be wrong, because this here is a very rare species of bass only native to the central Texas clear lakes and clear rivers, and that is called the Guadalupe bass. Now the Guadalupe bass is the state fish of Texas, and in terms of behavior, size, and uh, you know forage and such, I think it closely resembles a spotted bass mixed with a smallmouth bass. So it's a very, very cool species of fish, but I've never seen a Guadalupe bass spawn up this shallow before, and so I had to take advantage and put the camera down on this fish. Now when I first see a bass on a bed, there comes this decision I have to make on whether or not that fish is going to be catchable. And so when I throw my lure in there and I see the fish dart off and never come back, I know that fish is probably not quite ready to be caught yet. But this fish right here is displaying a behavior that 99% of cases means it may be hard to catch him, but he is ready to be caught at some point very soon. And that is it right there. He has showed interest in the lure. That's the, the first tip I'm going to give you guys is that when you're fishing for bedding bass, you want to find a fish that at least shows some kind of interest in your lure. I've had so many scenarios where I, I flip the bait down there, and of course the fish is committed, but the fish doesn't even show any kind of interest no matter how long I work the lure. And so in most cases, unless it's a giant, giant bass, I will move along from that fish. So once you've determined that a fish is in fact catchable, one of my first tactics that I like to do is wait for that fish, as you see here, to swim back to the bed without seeing your lure, then you move it, and all of a sudden that fish is basically like almost like surprised. Imagine you were walking into your room with the lights off, didn't know anybody was there, flip the lights on and you see someone standing there, of course you're going to react. That is exactly what I'm doing to this fish right here. I'm flipping my lure in there, in this case my white craw, and I'm not allowing him to see the lure until he's already protecting his nest, then I move the lure and he starts to react to it. So I will oftentimes repeat that process many many times until that fish eventually A completely eats the lure out of just pure surprise, or B, starts to show different signs of action that may require me to change up my tactics a little bit. Now at this part in my process of catching this fish, I was working my craw along the bottom, and I ended up getting it snagged on a root of a plant. And in most cases when I'm fishing, I'm not very happy when I get my lure snagged, but in this case I could see down on the bottom and I could see that I was not in fact very stuck. I could pull it off easily if I wanted to. The root was not very strong. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave it down there and jiggle the heck out of this thing in the bass's area to see if I can get him to react. Because oftentimes this is the way that a drop shot works, is when you keep the lure in the same exact place, the fish gets more and more aggravated, moves on to higher stages of, of being angry with this lure or whatever is in its bed, and oftentimes that can either change the fish to become more you know, intensely focused on eating or you know, getting your lure out of the bed, or it can actually cause him to strike. And so when you get stuck when you're down there, not every time is it going to be the end um, of your you know, possibility of catching this fish. Now if you missed that, take a look at the top of your screen and let's take another instant replay look at this scenario. This bass here was just protecting his nest and then a carp decided to swim by and whether or not his plan was to eat the bass's eggs, the bass doesn't know that and so it has to be in a protective mode. And so if I see a fish that is having to protect his nest or is aggravated by an outside force beyond my control, as you can see here I always make sure to have some kind of lure ready to throw in there. Because think about it, if somebody was getting you aggravated and you were throwing punches, and someone else was to jump in the ring, you would immediately want to, to, to punch them as well. And so that's exactly what I'm doing with this bass, is that because he is aggravated from this carp swimming by, I'm gonna try to take advantage of that and try to catch him when he's in an aggravated mood. And so just like in most cases of, of betting bass, this fish here reacted best when I let him swim onto the nest and I used a very fast retrieve to almost surprise him into biting. And boom, there he goes. 
But let's take an instant replay look at that real quick because I could tell this fish did not have the shank of the hook in his mouth. He basically just had, you know, the claws in the back half of the soft plastic. And so I jiggled around my lure a little bit in his mouth until he let go because I did not want to set the hook in that scenario. That is just so interesting to watch, so cool to see how the fish will have no interest in actually eating the bait whole. He just wants to grab the tail of the craw and just kind of lift it off the bed and swim it away. It shows such the cool distinction between this time of the year and most others. And most others, that fish is probably, you know, in a, in a feeding mood that wants to eat the whole thing. And this time of the year, he just wants to grab it, and take it off the bed so he can continue to protect his nest. And there he goes. I got my first underwater fish catch of a Guadalupe bass. One of my, to be honest, bucket list items that I did not expect to get. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Please, please hit the subscribe button if you guys have not yet to join the TRF team. Um, of course, if you guys have any questions or comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you guys are into underwater footage, I have about 25 or 30 more videos like this on my channel. So they will be linked up in these corners below, as well as some, um, some tournament videos, some tournament coverage from my college tournaments this year. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Drill Fishing.